Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Chris Brown, and we are continuing on with our municipal series for 2023, where we sit down with municipal leaders from across Canada to talk to them about their community and also their duty to serve. On today's show, we have first-term counselor for the city of Brooks, Alberta, Councillor Mohammed Idris. Councillor Idris, welcome to the show. Mohammed, I'm glad to have you on. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for the invitation and for hosting me here. Uh, I do enjoy your show, I was, as we talked about this earlier, and uh, I applaud you for the work you do. Well, thank you so much. So as you are a fan of the show and you've listened to a few episodes before, you know my first question. You know the question that I start all my interviews off, so you're no exception. Council Idris, where does your sense of duty to serve come from? My dad. Uh, my dad is someone that uh, spent all his life um, serving his community or serving his communities, actually. He lived in many different places. Um, he he served them um, with with. With, with honor, uh, he, he, he looked at service as something that is beyond doing it for either a position or, um, or some sort of um, uh, a secondary gain that you are going to get out of it. He served them because uh, he used to say actually to us, uh, all of his children, he used to tell us that, you know, you could live, you could live a wonderful life. You, you, you go to the best schools, you, you, you get the best relationships, you have the best kids, um, and, and, and you raise them fine and, 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 and you die. And, and just five years, 10 years after that, nobody is going to remember you. And, and, uh, that's not a life worth living. Um, uh, our lives should be left should be lived for others. Um, we we have to leave a legacy. We have to have an impact where we live. Um, and you, he, he used to always ask us this question when we when we sit for dinners or when we um, when we talk about our days. Uh, what did you do to help others today? Um, uh, did you did you help a colleague or 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 or, or a friend in school? Did you help someone on the streets? Um, and and he used to take me with him to these uh, events or these uh, uh, volunteer opportunities that he he used to be engaged in. And I used to be like my I, I would be like seven or eight years old. And my dad, my mom would tell him that like like leave him, let him let him enjoy his childhood, let him let him sleep. For example, if it's an early wake up, or let him let him play with his friends. And, uh, and 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 my father would say, no, this is this is what I want him to do, and he would take me with him. And at the time, I used to say, like, why, why me? Why, like, like I'll be I'll be leaving the house, and 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 our neighbor kids will be playing outside, and I would love to have played with them, but but we're going somewhere to do a fundraising, or we're going somewhere to do this or that. At that time, I I I really didn't didn't see why he's doing this, why he's not allowing me to, to, to live my childhood. Um, but now uh, I don't, I don't like, I can't, I can't do anything else. So where'd the political itch come from for you? Because it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong from your opening statement there, um, your father was very involved in the communities that he uh, was a part of, but it doesn't sound like he was politically involved. He was more volunteer, nonprofit organizations. Was politics discussed at the table? Because I don't imagine you just randomly get the urge one day to talk about politics and run for a city councillor position in the city of Brooks. Was politics a thing growing up or was this, or are you the dark sheep of the family and you're the one who kind of went the political route instead of the volunteerism and the nonprofit? So my father has never had um, a political position, um, but he was politically very engaged. Uh, uh, I, I come from Ethiopia, uh, Ethiopia, uh, uh, is is a, is a country with a long history, but but part of that history is a very dark history. Um, we we had an empire that uh, many people uh, thought as as not a just empire, and uh, and my father actually was one of the people that that Paris called for uh, being a republic and in 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 trying to do it differently, and uh, uh, he was part of uh, movements that at the end in like led to led to led to many changes politically uh, but when he was asked to to be part of it 
once it's done, he didn't want to be part of it. Um, uh, he 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 thought that um, political is a dirty game. He, he he enjoyed watching it. He enjoyed uh, influencing it. He enjoyed being being engaged with it. But he always believed that uh, it's a dirty game that he didn't want to be uh, part of. Uh, so when when but but that being said, as you said, uh, I I use I, I I remember although I'm I'm 45, so I'm, I'm not that old, but uh, uh, but but I do remember, for example, being about eight nine years old and watching uh, Ronald Reagan, for example. Uh, I, I I do remember talking about Fidel Castro on 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 dinner um, when when I was like. 12 years old, for example. Um, I do remember watching um, uh, the Berlin Wall fall. And, and so so politics was always something that we discussed, uh, we talked about. Uh, but yes, my father uh, did not have a political position. Did you, did you always want to run for political office? What made you re- decide in 2021, because that was when you first were elected in October of 2021, what was the decision based on in 2021 to say, okay, this is the time. I see what's happening in my community. I think I'm the best person to address this issue. So what was it about 2021 that you decide, okay, now's the time. Now's the time to put Mohammed's name on the uh, the ballot for people to cast their vote for me. So 2020, by the way, or 2021, was it my first try? Um, I did I did run. I think the first time I ran it was 2013. Okay. 2013. Yeah. So, so. Um, okay. So let's talk about that 2013 election then. So, 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 what, so was it in so, the city of Brooks that you ran yes. as well? Okay. So let's talk yes. about 2020, 2013. What so was it I about said, 2013 that made you decide to put your name forward? So as I said, we, uh, our family, my, 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 Siblings, we are all very engaged in terms of uh, wherever we lived, we we wanted to have an impact. We wanted to do things. Um, And for a very long time, I I, I thought about this idea of the people who do the work and the people who put the policies in in the the legislation and and the systems that we people who are working in the front line work in. And and, and many times I felt there is this disconnection between the two. and I felt that, you know, if, if if those people knew how things are happening here or or if those people did have a seat on the table and were able to do these policies and, 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 and you know, engage with, with legislations and things like that. So I've always had this, this, this. But as I said, my father looked at politics as a dirty game. Uh, he that he didn't want to be play with it, with it. So I was influenced by that to a degree. So I was more closer to the people who are working on the front line. But but as I grew up and as I as I thought about this more and more, I felt like you know what I actually do have the knowledge, do have the experience, do have the the know of that makes me actually become a better person who can do policies and who can who can uh, you know make legislations and, and and influence these systems. Um, so so. It wasn't. It wasn't a very foreign concept to run for politics. It wasn't anything that that came from nowhere. It was something that gradually I felt like, you know what, maybe I need to take that step. So 2013. So why why municipally? Sorry, I have to ask that question because you can you can change policy, you can change direction federally, provincially, or municipally. But in 2013, you said municipally because I'm assuming it's closer to home, it's closer to the community. You chose municipal politics. Was there a decision or was it an easy decision to always choose municipal politics? Um, my my interest, actually, by the way, um, in terms of politics, is is very global. Um, um, we, we we again, I, I talk a lot about this in my dad in my family. We talk a lot about global citizenship, in, in that you know, um, we need to impact the world. We need to have this idea that uh, what I do here do influence other places in in all of that. Uh, that being said, uh, when I when I was I immigrated to Canada in 2006, um, and I learned the the Canadian political system starting then about you know the municipal level, the provincial level, the the, the federal level. Other places I have lived in um, are more central, and and if you really wanted to have influence, you just go to the top, and you are part of the top, and you influence everyone, and and there isn't that you know 
like there is there, there is some there is some interesting stuff there too. Um, so when I came here and I learned these three levels and I started learning about what 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 each one of those jurisdictions are and things like that, I felt like you know what um, municipal level is actually the closest to the, the the life of the people who are living in this in this country because you actually are that close to them actually proximity first um, and then also the issues that you deal with in that in that so so you, you really are able to make changes in your community better if you are in that level uh, and that is why I decided to run uh, municipally at the time so in 2013 was there an issue that you were looking at you wanted to tra- change or was it a overarching you believe that you like you said you needed that voice on council and you thought your voice was the best so was it voice or was it issue that drove you in 2013 to put your name forward it was not an issue um okay. and and i actually believe that uh candidates who run for specific issues uh you know you may be able to change or not change or anything but but their their influence their their impact uh, is less than candidates who run for for maybe other reasons and i mentioned some of the reasons i, I ran for but actually in my case i want to add that there are some other uh, aspects of 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 why i decided to run or why i run uh, uh, this country I, I'm an immigrant in this country, and many people are immigrants to this country. Um, and I really owe a lot to this country uh, uh, for welcoming me, for for making me part of of of, of the community here. Uh, but also, uh, you know, the idea that we we need to give back, and, and and politics is one way to give back. The idea that you know, I I, I want to be someone that um, uh, an immigrant that actually come to this country, not to only take from this country, but to also give to this country back. Um, I wanted, uh, in another aspect, I wanted representation, and, and I really believe representation matters. Uh, uh, I looked at council, and, and, and they were doing wonderful work, but they really did not look like the community we lived in at the time. Brooks was changing, Brooks was becoming, and now is one of the most diverse communities in the world. Um, we call it the city of 100 halos. Um, and representation really, uh, whether it is whether it is uh, visible rep- representation, whether it is uh, gender representation, whether whether, it, whether, it, whether it, it, is, it is age representation, wasn't that much present on council. Um, and I really felt that uh, uh, my voice uh, could add to that you've brought up a lot of conversations that I want to talk about here. So, and I know we have 45 minutes, so I want to try and get into as much as possible. You talk about diversity. You talk about uh, the voice that wasn't on council. Um, I, let's be honest. Alberta is a uh traditionally anglophone uh very white uh commun- uh province i'm not saying it isn't now we are changing like you said uh, the city of brooks is a city of 100 uh, hellos and which is good to hear um did you ever feel pushback when you were running for council either in 2013 or 2021 that the race factor was a issue for some voters or the uh gender factor because I have had your colleague Marissa Wardrope on the show and we we didn't get into it as much but I wish I did did you ever feel that pushback or did you find that people in Brooks was accepting and open to the idea that you know what we do need a new voice on council. We do need a diverse voice on council. And if uh, Mohammed wants to be that, let's put him in because I think he would be the best person as well. Like, um, I, I, I personally uh, actually have to say that I haven't seen um, a pushback, uh, you know, visibly in front of me. Um, do I hear things? Uh, uh, do I know of of people that may not have the the the, the best? Um, reaction to this yes uh, am i naive to think that our community is is a racism free community no um, I, I i know that there are people who are taking these changes you know not very not very positively but i actually focus on the others i, I focus on the on those who are actually leading this change and, and i focus on those who are really promoting this um, and you know our community has gone through uh, a tremendous change uh, like like Brooks about 
15 years ago uh, was a community maybe of, of one color, one language, one, one religion, one culture. Uh, while it's not the same now, uh, uh, and, and there is a lot of work that we have, we have done to make the community more welcoming and more inclusive, but, but that doesn't mean we have we got it and we are, we are there. Um, and actually it's interesting that the work of inclusion, the work of diversity, uh, it's not something that you do and then and then you get you get to a point that says we are good and and, and you stop. And you, actually, if you do that, you start going back. Yeah. Uh, uh, because of influences, whether whether here or outside, uh, you know, I, I I'm going to say this, and I know some people may not feel that or or may not uh, like what I'm going to say, but but I actually believe that. Brooks was in a little bit better place, maybe like five years ago, six years ago, compared to today. Um, uh, partially because of the, the 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 populism that is going everywhere, and and, and um, I hate to bring his name, but Trump uh, uh, and, and and his influence on what happened. Uh, but partially because we thought that we got it, and 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 and, and we we reached, and and, and we, we are now good, and. Um, and, and and maybe we 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 started a little bit uh, taking the foot off the well yeah. So yeah. I want to talk about 2021, and I want to go back to October here for a second because I want to talk about election night, October 2021, when the check mark goes beside your name, you are officially elected councillor for the city of Brooks. What's the first thought that goes through your head that night? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Really? Yeah. Like, exactly. I'm going to be honest with you. A couple of things. So I'm going to go uh, maybe an hour before that moment. Okay. okay. And and uh, so that so so the, the the polls are closed. The the numbers are are starting to come in, and and I'm seeing that my numbers are good, but 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 it's very similar to what happened in in 2013 when I lost by about 36 votes. So I was I was good, but it was like I was I was like we need seven seats in 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 around this the seventh person or we I mean so you're like the eighth or you're flipping from yeah. seventh to eighth oh god that's and, probably and, a and thinking, roller coaster okay, this is this is another 2013 and, and and I'm starting to think about okay like I had I had few people um we we gathered in in a community place here and and I had few people there and I was thinking okay what I'm gonna tell people because. Because I actually felt there were some people that will be that much disappointed and that much uh, thinking, actually thinking that maybe it's because of who I am, not because of, for example, just, you know, people's, because there are some people who, who may jump quickly to that. It's it's because of this or because of that. Yeah. So I was thinking about that and thinking what I'm going to tell people and and then and then said, so and, and, and now to a degree, I felt like okay, it's it's good. I'm not gonna go in. I'm just gonna do this, and and then we are gonna go home. My wife and my kids, and and and, and good. And, and and I didn't think it's gonna go. And then suddenly, the numbers starts coming. The last few polls start coming, and I jumped to, to to six. So now it looks like I'm in. I jumped to fifth. Okay, not only here, I jumped to. I think I think I jumped to fourth or something like that. And now I know. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> what? Like, uh, and I got the call. I got the call from um, uh, the returning officer saying that um, we just finished the counting, and and you are you are till unless you know. I think they have to go through two three days of and, certification and, and, and all that. Yeah. And, that. and and now I'm thinking. Okay, uh, I'm in. So what? What am I going to do? Like like am I going to be able to deliver am i going to you know did i really think that i can do something that i can't do and in in what about all those people that that believed in me and, and like all of these all of these worries about not delivering um because i felt again um and, and not that i take that on my shoulder like as as maybe one of the first um uh, visible minorities that go in if i don't do good what are you know we have given them the chance and they haven't done it okay um so all of that worry started coming in and 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 and, and i quickly just said a few words to people we we my, my wife was there and she was really helpful um in the sense that you know 
don't think about it just just have fun and she she, she always tells me that I can't have fun um but but just have fun just enjoy it just in and, and, and we, 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 you will worry about that some other time you, and, you, uh, you, I, I want to interrupt here for a second because you said something I want to jump on here you said you felt a weight on you about if I don't perform well if I don't deliver the people might look and say okay we've tried it let's go back to the old way do you still carry that today? Do you still do. like like we're a year almost a year and two months from the last election? Do you yeah. still carry that weight? I do. Really? I do. This is a fascinating and you know what? Like, I love like this I conversation think, so much I think, right now. I yeah. think and, and I ask this question to actually uh, to many people who are from a visible minority background or or a woman or um, or from uh, a sexual orientation or gender uh, orientation that that may not be the 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 the, the majority and, and and many of them answer the same um, i remember talking to a professor from the university of calgary uh, she she was from an asian background um, and she was a professor at the university and she has been a professor there for i think 10 years or so and I asked her that question, and she said, "I still do." She said that if my if my colleague did two papers per year, I need to do three. Um, if my colleague attended one conference per year, I need to attend two. Uh, I'm a woman. I'm I'm, I'm Asian, uh, and 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 I carry that with me. In a in a in and you know, although we talk about you know we know. Uh, like when we think about it, we know that I represent myself. I like I, I don't carry the weight of of everyone that looks like me. Uh, but no, it, it but is, you carry it, the show. You carry the weight of everyone that you represent, though. Exactly, you exactly. represent the city of Brooks because at, in the city of Brooks, you represent. You are elected at an at large uh, uh, area, right? For the whole city, yeah. Yeah, you're not representing just the uh diverse people you're not re uh, re representing the lgbt community you're representing all of brooks oh, yeah. so how much weight and responsibility does that put on you every single time you walk into that council chamber i try to perform as if this is something that you know i have to not 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 be just a good counselor but i have to be an excellent counselor i have to uh i have to be there i have to i have to deliver um i have to i have to show something for it i i, I carry the, I'm, I'm not going to say that it is something that's always on my mind in the sense that it makes me not be able to do my job uh but actually it is on my mind enough for me to reach for excellence, not for uh, just doing a good job. How do you balance that? How do you balance that? Because you have to represent the entire city, but you have things that you want to focus on as well. But you have to look at the city as a whole. You have to move the city forward as a entire city, not just I want to worry about recreation. I want to worry about uh, this road. You have to worry about the city as a whole. How do yeah. you balance the needs and wants of your community against the direction that you want to see the city move forward? And I need to clarify here, by the way, I'm not I'm not saying that I feel I need to do a good representation for newcomers. Yeah, no, I'm not and I didn't that. take it that way. Okay. Yeah, like I need to do a good job for the city. Yeah, because there is that idea that uh, what we talked about earlier, in the sense that you know. We have given them the chance. What did they do? Kind of thing, and even and even by the way, in my own community, in like like I actually even have it in my own community in the sense that, you know, so so what? So what have you added? Uh, kind of thing. Um, so 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 this this balance that you you have to do between between being, you know, I am just a counselor that. I will do what I can, and then in the next election, I may be there, I may not be there, and all of that. But you think about it as, you know what? Uh, I am, I am this first person that that came here. There is there is young people in the school looking at me. Okay, there is there is uh, people who like I like I, I was in the school I think a couple months ago, and. Uh, and 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 many of the kids there like will come and will talk to me and will say that you know 
we felt that now we can be in places like this. Like, like we, I remember a couple of years ago, um, and that is in the, and that is around the time I was telling you that it was I was in the council at the time, but but the high school kids, the high school kids uh, invited me to a graduation, uh, their their convocation, and I was thinking. Why did they invite me? Like, like I, I have, I have nothing, to, nothing to do with the schools, uh, and and um, I didn't do anything that is worthy of being invited as a special guest for for graduation. Um, and then when I when I asked some people and I looked at, into it, it happened that there was, the, I think there is in the school when high school kids graduate, they form uh, a graduation committee that 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 prepares this. Yeah. And then they were given the task to invite 20 individuals from the city that influenced their life or or helped them get to where they are. And, and some of the kids in that graduating class uh, were newcomers. And, and they, they thought about the idea that there was nobody else that was a newcomer that was in that group that were invited. And and wow. I happen to be someone who is engaged in the community who do some work here and there. So they thought I'm, I'm uh, a role model enough to to be invited to this. So so starting from there, in 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 what I talk about in the terms in terms of um, uh, carrying that weight, it's the idea that not only not only the general public and thinking, okay, this is a new person in, in, in council and in, in what is he doing, but also kids who are looking at me as a role model, kids who didn't think that they can be in a place like this and now they are in a place like they can they can dream. Um, so I think about all of that um, and, I, and I think I need to be the best counselor that I could be uh, to, to, to deliver. So I just realized we're at the 20 minute mark and I have so many other topics I want to talk about right now. I, I would love to continue talking about you, but I want to talk about the city of Brooks as a whole now. And before I start this, I'm going to state this question because the last time I spoke to a city councillor from Brooks, I got some messages that were not the most friendly saying that she wasn't, she was speaking out of turn and she, uh, she wasn't addressing these at council. This is a conversation between councillor Idris and myself. This is not a dis- decision of council. This is a conversation between the two of us. So this is his opinion. So Councilor Idris, I have one question I want to start off in this segment with, and that is, in your opinion, your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing the city of Brooks today? You know, uh, I, can, I can I can answer by saying um, uh, it is infrastructure and uh, uh, it is it is policing and uh, it is this and that and these are and these are important issues and I don't want anybody to 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 get me wrong these are important issues that actually I tell my wife when I ran in twenty twenty one in 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 got on council I did not think. That I'm gonna spend as much time I'm spend I'm spending now thinking about sewage systems, okay, as much as I'm doing now. Okay. I, I okay, I, I've gotta I, stop you right here for a second. The amount of counselors and mayors and reeves I've talked to in my time in doing this show, waste management is the one thing they never expect to talk about, but we always seem to talk about it. Exactly, exactly. I actually remember the very first time I visited the lift station and my first question was, what's a lift station? Okay, so 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 these are important, like really, really important issues. And, and, and there are issues that the general public only think about when there is something wrong. Okay, you will only think about the sewage system and the waste management systems if your toilet is not flushing. Okay, and that is and that is the only time you are going to think about it and going to come to council. And but the amount of time we spend in council talking about it and thinking about it, and 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 you know what? I give it to the people who work there, and 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 if if not for them, where we will be as a community. So 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 all of that. 
but I'm actually going to talk about something else that I that I think about in 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 and really try to find ways to to uh, to to make decisions and make make projects and make things in council that will bring positive impact there, and and that is actually the idea of. Uh, uh, what does our community or where we are going to be in five years, in 10 years, in 15, from, from a social uh, perspective, from, from an economic perspective. Um, for example, one of the things we, like I really care about and I really think about a lot is the idea of sense of belonging. And, and, and you know what? Um, and it's not only about newcomers. It's not only about immigrants. Um, the sense of belonging of every citizen in our community to this community. Um, Brooks is a very transient community. Uh, for th 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 there is a core. There is a core of residents that are from Brooks, and they, they have been here forever. But but many people in Brooks. You ask you ask someone that have lived here for ten years, fifteen years. And 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 you'll tell him where are you from, and they will tell you they are from Saskatchewan. Uh, but you have lived here for fifteen years, and 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 and, and this is your community, and, and and how 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 what is your sense of belonging to this community? Um, so so this is one of the issues I think about, and, and I think about how can we as the city influence that, and how can we as the city make make programs, make investments, make uh, uh, social social changes that that impact that. Uh, so how do you, how do you do that? Because uh, I can imagine it is not frustrating but hard to get someone's mentality to think. After 15 years, I'm no longer from Saskatchewan. I'm from Brooks. I'm no longer from X. I'm I'm living in my community, and this is my community, and I need to put pride in my community. Not saying that they don't. I'm just saying that there there's a little less pride if you're saying I'm from somewhere else and you're living in a city for 15 years. How do you, as a counselor, move that forward to make people feel be, uh, welcome and belong to their community of the city of Brooks. And that is the million dollar question. Okay. And, <laughs> but and... you're a counselor. You should be able to fix it, right? <laughs> so, so I'm going to just tell you a couple of things uh, that, that actually came up and we talked about in, 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 in we are doing um, uh, green spaces in the community in, 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 in recreation in the community uh, for example, there was there was uh, a park that was in a neighborhood that for a while maybe didn't have enough maintenance, didn't look good, uh, and, and, and didn't get that attention that it deserved, okay? But, but going there and talking to the community and revitalizing that park uh, and, and, and really making a big a big story of it, a big a new big good story of it. Um, and, and and telling the, the community around there that this is this is your park and this is and this is the this is the place you know for you in in in, in involving them that is that is one thing for example um, uh, another another issue was for example we we talked about and we are we are trying to take some steps uh, uh, in that we do not have a cemetery in in Brooks for Muslims uh, so. People who are who who are who are Muslims who who die in Brooks are 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 being buried either in Medicine Hat or in 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 in, in Calgary. What does that do to 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 the to someone's sense of belonging to this community if you don't have a place a last place in in in, in this community? So so it's 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 finding these 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 issues that are within our jurisdiction as as council that influences. Uh, people's sense of belonging. Uh, there are some places that maybe it's not directly our jurisdiction, but we can help. We can support. We can we can advocate whether 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 it's with the provincial government, for example, uh, immigration and in in settlement in 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 funding for that in our community um, uh, for people who are who are here and who are uh, trying to build a life for themselves here. What can we do to 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 help those? Uh, uh, 
so that they can feel that sense of belonging. Um, there are some partners we work with, for example, um, the, the the meat plant in our in our community. Uh, they 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 do awesome work. They have a lot of newcomers in the plant, and and, and they do awesome work, and and we try to support them, uh, and, and they support us. They are actually being partner in this in this park I talked about. So these are these these are some of the some of the ways that you try to address it. Sort of a side story here, and I hate to throw this in because I know we're talking about you, but I, I once interviewed a politician way back in my uh, print days back in Ontario. He was he lived in a certain area, but he was running for a different area of the city. And the running joke he said was, "I bought a gravesite for me and my wife in that com- in that part of the community, so people would know I'm dedicated to that part of the community." But I so I completely understand where you're coming yeah. from. Where if people don't feel like they can live live raise them their family, but also spend their retirement and afterlife there, then they're not going to feel part of that community. So I, I had to throw that in because I yeah. thought no, of that. No. This, is, this is, this is very meaningful. Uh, yeah. Like, like, like when we talked about it in council, um, like it, 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 it could have been brought up as, you know, what uh, an issue of, of, of immigrants and this and that, but no, it was actually brought up as a sense of belonging issue yeah. uh, that, that the counselor really, the counselor is really, and, and, I, and I give it to all of our council members, they really understood that that is the issue. You are a year and two months into your first, almost two months. By the time this airs, it'll be three months into your uh, uh, first term as councillor. What have you learned about the process of uh, local government since being elected? Because I can imagine being an outsider, you think things are going to go a lot faster. Things might uh, change a little bit faster. But you, you you jokingly said, I didn't think I'd be talking about waste management as much as I have. But is there something about this job that you wish you would have known then before you got involved or got elected? Um. um... In, in in one way, um, as I told you earlier when we started, um, I am very engaged. So so I I knew all councillors uh, from before. I I will attend council meetings. I will come actually and present to council. I will come to present to council committee when there are some issues that I was I was involved in. Um, so in one sense, I felt like I knew a lot. Okay. But 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 on the other on the other side, once I got in, I actually also learned that I actually don't know a lot, and and I, and I need to learn, and I need to listen, and I need to you know uh, learn from the people who who were there before me. That is that is one side. Uh, the, the other side about municipal government in in this system that we 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 live in the Canadian political system. The the the, the 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 municipal government is the is the level of government that really works on that council really working together to deliver something. Um, I told you I lived other places in the past, and and even municipal politics had party lines, and and I know we are talking about that in the province here, uh, but but I think it it's it works perfectly now when when we all have. And especially in these communities where there are no ward systems, okay. When when there is ward systems, there is still like I like I was I was following the the last election in Calgary, and and, the, and there is still some you know, but 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 here we all represent the whole city, and we all work together to get something done. Like I cannot do it myself; they cannot do it. Like nobody can do it themselves. So so. Um, uh, being able to influence your 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 colleagues and being able to being influenced by your colleagues sometimes is is very important. Uh, uh, the idea that uh, you you deliver you deliver slowly but you deliver surely is something that's very important. Uh, the idea that uh, you you the way you present your ideas, the way you you bring your ideas you have to you have to find the value for it for everyone who are sitting on council um, these are all things that i learned in this year uh, the idea of the 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 the, the, the that, that we are one we are a family 
Exactly. Actually, maybe this is the sentence. We are a family. In in unless we really work together as a family, we won't be able to do anything. So the reason I asked that last question is to ask this question. Then I'm going to turn to my last segment here because I'm just uh, cautious of time here for yourself. Um, are people in Brooks engaged? You talk about yourself, and I, I, I'm going to say this, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, you kind of feel like a political animal. You attended the council meetings. You knew your councillors. You kind of were up on the issues that were facing your community. Do you find the people of Brooks engaged in their political uh, dialogue of what's going on in the city? Or are people, like you said, and going back to an earlier statement, they don't care unless their water doesn't turn on their toilet doesn't flush, then they care about what's going on in local government. Do you believe that the people of uh, city, the city of Brooks is are engaged in what's going on municipally? I, 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 would, I would say that I would love if people are engaged more. Um, and, and, and what do I mean by that? There are... There, there is this idea that sometimes either only people who are very happy or people who are very upset talk, yeah. okay? Um, and, 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 and maybe more people who are very upset. Uh, uh, and, 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 and that brings also what we talked about earlier, that, that sometimes people just worry about one specific issue in, 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 in one. Um, so, so when it is that issue, they are, they are, they are very engaged and they are, you know, they have a very strong opinion about it one way or the other, and 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 they make their opinion heard. But I think if people look at it as as a whole, if people look at uh, our our work, our decisions, our uh, our even our budget and everything we do as a whole, I think people will will find it will find reasons will find will learn will be will be we'll be able to take decisions based on real data and real information. Um, and, and for example, engagement is one of the things that, that we put as a, as, a, as a goal for ourselves in council, engaging with more people. And you try to, you know, do 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 surveys, you try to do this and that. And, and the numbers that you get sometimes are not the best numbers. Um, as so, a former so, communications person for a town uh, in Alberta, I know that those numbers are never the numbers you want. You want at least half the population. If you get ten percent, you're happy. Yeah, yeah. So, so for me, I'm thinking about what else can we do, uh, and I'm trying to look at some people who who do it good for you. Like I, I follow a number of counselors on on social media, and and I try to learn from them. Uh, uh, so I'm thinking about this spring, this summer, to do like town halls or 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 um, coffee with a counselor or or, or things like that, um, uh, and then and then also, you know, we all have our strength. Like some of our council members are more more strong in 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 reaching out to people and being able to talk to people and doing that. So maybe they could lead something like that, and and we all could benefit from it as counselors. So I want to turn to our last subject here, and this is my favorite part of it. Well, not that the entire conversation hasn't been fun already, but I love tourism, 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 tourism. We always forget that municipalities have a very important role to play in tourism in our province and in our country. So Councillor Idris, in your opinion, what are some of the tourist destinations that if someone's coming to the city of Brooks tomorrow, they need to stop and see? Couple of things actually. First of all, I am on the tourism board, in, in, as, as like from 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 council. I I, I represent council on the Brooks uh, Region Tourism uh, Board, um, and I actually think our region is one of the hidden gems of uh, Southern Alberta or even Alberta. Um, uh, we have a lot of of, of um, lakes in 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 in, in water. Uh, uh, activities that you can do around the community, whether it is the, the largest uh, man-made lake, the Newell Lake, uh, or, or, or or the different uh, reservoirs we have in our community um, that are opportunities for, uh, for uh, uh, camping. Uh, but actually, beyond that, even even the idea, like the bigger region, like if you look at, we have the 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 dinosaur park in our community, um, uh, and then and then the, the weather in our community, and, and we we talk about this area being one of the sunniest areas in 
in, in Alberta throughout throughout the year. Um, so I actually will take it one step further and say, you know, you know, why tourism? Why not come and live in Brooks? Okay, uh, and 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 I and, and and with that I talk about I talk about affordability. Uh, we are hearing not only in Brooks but Brooks in surrounding. We are hearing of people who are selling their uh, one plus million dollar houses in Vancouver or in Calgary and coming in in, in buying a house on the lake for five six hundred thousand okay or even in the city for two two three hundred thousands um we are still a community that's growing uh in 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 and there is a lot of opportunities uh for people to come uh, one of the things we are focusing on in terms of tourism in our community is also sport tourism uh, we have uh, hosted a number of different sport uh, events the largest being a couple of years ago, we hosted the the the, the national junior uh, league hockey uh, championship, and in 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 maybe we will host it again. Um, there is there is a lot to do. Actually, there is this group um, that's called Road Trip Alberta, uh, and and they did these couple of videos about our region. Um, spending 24 hours in, in our region and what can you do in 24 hours. And um, I think in many places they do one videos, they had to do a couple of videos in our, in our, in our region. There is, there is breweries, there is uh, uh, farms that you can go and visit. There are, there are a lot that you can do in our community. So uh, what's your favorite part? So after a long day at council, after a hard, stressful day, where do you go to decompress in your community? Is there a, a park? Is there a brewery? What do you do to decompress in the city of Brooks? Um, personally, and, 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 and that could be maybe not the answer you're looking for. I go to my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> You are not the only counselor to say that. So. Yeah, I go and, and, and try to put everything away and just watch a silly TV show that that means nothing. Uh, and, and that is how I decompress. But 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 my kids, and, and when I do things with, with, with my kids, my kids love being around here, um, uh, whether it is activities or whether it is things to do. And the dinosaur park is actually a place that um, you can't visit enough. Uh, my kids love going there any time of the day. Well, I've I said this to Councillor Wardrop when we had her on in October, but I'm going to tell you as well. I'm going to be out in Brooks in February, so I'm looking forward. Oh. If you want to grab a coffee, I'd love to sit down with to. you and Councillor Wardrop and have a coffee and talk about your beautiful community because I feel like people need to get out and explore locally and maybe put off that Cancun trip till 2024 and explore the great How long community. are you staying for? Pardon me? How long are you staying for? As long as I can find as much stuff to do in the city of Brooks. I, I want to explore and maybe get a little private tour from the two counselors who came on the show. We would love to do that for you. <laughs> awesome. Um, my last question, and this is the important one. What makes the city of Brooks such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family, Counselor Idris? I would say our diversity. And, and I know it's a cliche, but it's our diversity. Uh, uh, in the last in the last census, I think the numbers the numbers were like we are about half uh, of our population are uh, people who are visible minority, um, and and that is one area. Uh, but but also another area I want to actually uh, talk about uh, is the idea that you you have the small town feeling. Uh, uh, spirit and all of that but also you have everything you need uh, it's not it's not one of those small towns that you will need to go to another town for hospital or you need to go to another town for shopping or you need to go somewhere else uh, and then centrally located to you know an hour to medicine hat two hours to calgary uh, just two hours to the american border uh, it's, it's 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 a wonderful place to live well, I'm looking forward to visiting once again. I was there a few years ago, but I want to get back. And like I said, February, I will be in the city of Brooks to do some tourism things in the city. So I'm looking forward to meeting you in person so we can shake hands and grab a coffee. We would love to have you and we would love to, you know, give you a tour. Um, just let's let's keep 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 chatting on 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 Twitter and we will plan something together. 
we certainly will. So with that, I want to thank Councilor Idris for coming in, sitting down and talking about the city of Brooks, but also himself. And I want to remind everyone, put down social media, go have a conversation with somebody, helps their society, helps their democracy, and helps us be better people at the end of the day. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews Municipal Series. We'll be back tomorrow for another great episode. Talk to you then.